Hello and welcome back to this week's PC Gaming News Recap. Lots going on between the Game Awards happening, a bunch of other end of year reveals, and several big news stories. We've got a new Warhammer multiplayer online RPG coming, Core Punk had its beta delayed, and there are rumors swirling about a potential Crowfall shutdown. Beyond those stories, we'll cover the launch woes of Final Fantasy XIV's Endwalker expansion, Myth of Empires getting removed from Steam for stealing code, we got some updates for Star Wars Ill Republic, PSO2 and V Rising. Also, like I said, the Game Awards happened. Um, I did make a dedicated video on that specifically, but I will briefly touch on some of my favorites here. Then we got a couple of other games revealed, and we'll wrap up the show with some of the new stuff that's playable this week, including a new expansion for Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, because what? <laughs> Anyways. Let's jump into this week's uh, top stories. So apparently there's a new Warhammer multiplayer online RPG in the works, but before you get too excited, let me say, for one, it doesn't look as of yet that the game's genre will be getting that second M that some of you might hope for, the massively, not sure it's gonna be there, and there's a few key details about the game that may quickly curb your enthusiasm. So Games Workshop sent out a press release this week revealing Warhammer Age of Sigmar, which they say is a new PvE social multiplayer next generation RPG. The game will build on the legacy of Age of Sigmar and features a new virtual world with socially interactive player verse environment focused gameplay, supported by Nexon's world-class live operations for sustaining the fun with new content and services and microtransactions. I added that last bit in. They go on to reiterate that yes, this is a PVE multiplayer focused RPG and it will be coming to PC consoles and mobile. And that last bit taking most of the wind out of my sails when it comes to this announcement. Phone games have come a long way in the past five years and you I mean you can get some pretty impressive gaming experiences on mobile devices. In fact one of the largest MMOs currently on the market, Black Desert Online, has its own mobile version which I've heard isn't half bad for a mobile MMO but a new multiplayer online RPG designed with phones in mind from the start leaves me less than hopeful in terms of the planned systems, the progression, and the monetization they're gonna use. But then on top of that, just the complexity in terms of the gameplay, the size of the game's world, and a whole host of other things. To put it simply, I just can't imagine a great PC online RPG coming out of something that is also designed to work and play well on a phone. Add on top of that Nexon's involvement, Warhammer Age of Sigmar goes straight into the expecting the worst, but hoping for the best category of upcoming games, which is a shame because a new Warhammer multiplayer online RPG sounds great in theory, but even with what little we know so far, I'm keeping my expectations very very low. We're about halfway through the month of December and up until recently we were still expecting the beta for Core Punk, but it turns out that will not be happening. In an update video released a few days ago, they revealed the beta has once again been delayed. They say they're behind schedule and the game isn't quite at the level of polish they want before releasing a playable build. This echoes talking points around the previous delay that happened last August. In there, they mentioned that they just wanted the game to feel basically finished with all of its major systems and features. It seems in the past few months, they still have yet to reach that point. Now, despite that, they have been making making significant progress. In the video, they say that all of the game's core systems are almost ready, and the next steps include testing the infrastructure and client performance, squashing bugs, and then moving into a friends and family testing period before doing one more round of polishing. After all of that, then they will begin the beta testing, which they say is currently expected at some point next spring. As always, every time delays happen, I say the same thing. It's fine, make the game as good as it can possibly be before releasing it, whether that's a beta release or a full launch. They do want first impressions to be good, and I think that's for good reason. There's a lot of competition. If you leave a bad first impression, people tend to put your game away. However, can I just say I would prefer if companies just not give target release windows until they are like nearly 100% certain that they can hit it. I do realize that's not always how things play out in reality. In fact, in the video, they, they touch on the fact that these delays are really hard on their team as well. The developer, Artificial Core, they're a fairly small studio, which means things like they don't have unlimited reservoirs of cash to pull from, and every delay does mean a hit to their available funds before they start making money back. Despite that, they still want to do the right thing, and they don't want to rush it. And yes, ultimately, I do think it's the best. We won't be playing Core Punk this month, 
maybe we will be in the spring. We'll see. I just sometimes I'm just like, just don't tell me about a game until like it's coming out in a month or something. In my ideal world, that's how it would work, but. I know, they gotta market the game and build up hype and all that stuff has to happen. Rumors have been swirling recently about a potential upcoming closure for the recently released PvP-focused MMO Crowfall. This news comes from what is reportedly a leaked investor report, which states the game has been performing below expectations. No surprises here. But as a result, it claims if we do not see a significant change in performance by the end of November, we will need to choose between continuing to invest in Crowfall features and content, reducing crowfall investment but continuing to run as a maintenance state, or shutting it down and prioritizing on our second project, Codename Atlas. Now, with that said, this was not an official announcement and is coming from a reportedly leaked investor report, which may or may not be real. What is real though, is the fact that Crowfall isn't doing well. We've seen the ramifications of its poor launch in the form of company-wide layoffs, low player counts before they started hiding those numbers, and opening up a free 10-day trial period for the game somewhat recently. Whether or not they are considering putting Crowfall into maintenance or shutting it down completely, it's unknown. But given just how poorly it does seem to be doing, I don't think it's an unreasonable possibility. Also interesting is that last bit of the quote. Apparently they may have a new game in the works called Atlas. I mean, who knows? Because again, this may all be completely untrue. Time will tell. Um, Crowfall's community manager did recently take to Discord saying if the game was going to shut down, we would let you know but a community manager will always say that up until there is an actual official announcement made. So again, we'll have to wait and see. This whole story just makes me feel like I should definitely go play Crowfall though. I mean, there have been a handful of MMOs that have come and gone that I actually enjoyed my time with, even though some of them never fully released or shut down shortly after release. Firefall, Wildstar, um, EverQuest Next, Landmark, the same games that always get brought up. Like I played those games and I had a decent, pretty decent time. They might've not been perfect. They might've had a lot of issues but there were things about it that I enjoyed. So maybe there will be things about Crowfall that I enjoy. It, it, I, I guess I'll wait till we get an official announcement that they're shutting down though. I don't want to waste too much of my time. <laughs> I did play the beta and I did not come away impressed. So, you know, again, I'm not surprised it, uh, Crowfall is in the state that it is in currently, which sucks to say because, you know, I remember when Crowfall was first revealed and there was a lot of excitement around it, but that was like, 10 years ago or something. It was a long time ago. <laughs> Speaking of hype, for all of the hype and praise that the game gets, Final Fantasy XIV has not managed to escape one major problem that plagues most popular online games, launch week server issues. I know last episode I mentioned that despite some hiccups with the servers, the launch of Endwalker had gone fairly smoothly. Well, as it turns out, those hiccups were more like earthquakes. Apparently the game's servers have been horrendous. Uh, login and disconnection issues, super long queue times. Sometimes players would wait for hours in a queue then to only be booted by those aforementioned disconnection issues. I guess it's just been a total mess since this thing launched. The good news, I suppose, is that once logged in, people are reportedly enjoying the expansion. It's just that logging in has been a non-trivial issue. I really wish I understood the logistics of this problem a little better. Over the years, with all of the multiplayer and MMO games that I've uh, covered and talked about and played myself, I've heard conflicting reports of how easy or not it is to avoid this particular problem of too many people trying to log into an online game simultaneously. It seems to hit just about every somewhat popular multiplayer game. Uh, some people say you can just throw more money at the problem, i.e. spin up more servers. Others claim it's not so simple. One thing I have learned over the years is that many things are in fact not as simple as they may seem. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's also the case here. Uh, not to remove any responsibility and any push to improve from the developer and the publisher, if there are in fact reasonable solutions, I do hope we see them implemented more often for the launch of these online only games and updates and expansions. Because nothing ruins some new content that you're looking forward to playing more than not having access to it. It's 
super frustrating. Now, as to the Endwalker launch specifically, they have been making progress towards addressing some of the major issues. They raised the login cap limit and fixed some of the disconnection errors. In addition, they're steadily making progress, they say, towards adding more data centers and servers, although apparently the semiconductor shortage has delayed that process. But to make up for this fairly rough launch, players have received seven free days of subscription time, which is a nice uh, consolation prize to getting to play that new game when everyone else is, or everyone else is trying to. Last month, the survival sandbox MMO Myth of Empires entered into Steam Early Access, and this month it has been removed for reportedly being built on stolen game code. You literally can't make this stuff up. Following the game's removal, the developer Angela Games posted an update that said, a few days ago, Steam received allegations of suspected copyright infringement concerning Myth of Empires, and in accordance with the DMCA and to exempt itself from liability has temporarily removed Myth of Empires from its store. Our development team solemnly declares Angela Games fully owns all rights and property associated with Myth of Empires and will actively respond to any doubts or allegations on this point. We are in active contact with Steam and are doing our best to restore the game to their store. We apologize for the inconveniences has caused players. So in summary, they claim that they own the game, no, they did nothing wrong, a, a mistake was made, and and the game will be coming back soon, which fine, that sounds fair, and I can totally empathize. I am currently dealing with copyright issues of my own. Some random YouTube channel is claiming that they own the official Halo Infinite gameplay trailer footage that I used in some of my videos. They clearly do not. It belongs to Microsoft in 343, but they say it's theirs, and they want all of my video earnings as a result. Uh, super fun stuff, let me tell you. <laughs> so yeah, I can empathize if like you get mistakenly accused of doing something wrong, and the other person is not in the right. However, it appears that the current situation with Myth of Empires, they may in fact be at fault. A report came out of PC Gamer that states the DMCA claim is coming from Ark Survival Evolved, who say that the a former Snail Games employee who started up the company that is making Myth of Empires used stolen source code from Ark to build Myth of Empires. That is a major no-no. They specifically point to hundreds, apparently, of matching class, variable, and function names in a preliminary analysis, which has them fairly confident that Myth of Empires was built from the ground up using stolen source code as the core foundation of their game. We'll have to see how everything shakes out. Uh, just like earlier today, Angela Games actually filed a lawsuit saying that this was all wrong and they didn't use stolen code. I know it's really confusing. The fact that that Steam removed the game from their stores makes me believe that Ark came out with some pretty compelling evidence to say, hey, these guys made their game from our game's code. It's just, you can't do that. So I don't know, this will probably take some time to resolve, but I guess the bottom line is don't expect Myth of Empires on the Steam store anytime soon, because there's probably like a bunch of litigation and stuff that has to happen between now and then, if it ever comes back. If they use stolen code, it's not coming back, so we'll, we'll just see. Star Wars The Old Republic had an expansion scheduled to release this week. However, just a few days ago, Bioware surprisingly announced it was being delayed. They said the legacy of the Sith is something the team has been hard at work on for quite a while, but as we get ever closer to launch, it is clear that we need a bit more time. We're focusing additional testing on the many areas we have changed throughout the game to deliver the experience we want and one that you deserve. So it was originally planned to release on the day I'm recording this, which is December 14th. A Legacy of the Sith will now be launching on February 15th, 2022. The expansion is adding a host of new content focused on the conflict between the Galactic Republic and the Sith Empire. Um, there will of course be some new quest lines taking you through brand new zones and dungeons. There's a new system called Combat Styles that basically let players choose any advanced class no matter what their original was. This basically opens up just a whole lot more combat customization and a potential variety. A new season is also being added to the game and there's gonna be some improvements to the general player experience and a whole lot of other things. I'm super happy to see that the Old Republic is trucking along. Now I haven't touched the game since it released. I think that was back in 2011, but I haven't ruled out the possibility of a revisit. Just add that onto my growing list of games that I want to play and probably don't have the time to do so. But I hear really good things though about like the main class storyline in particular, and apparently that is all part of SOTOR's free to play experience, which is pretty awesome. Might, might be worth checking out. The game does look super dated. Uh, even with any visual updates they've done uh, since 2011, but I like Star Wars. Like I've really gotten into Star Wars in recent years and 
Honestly, I just want SOTOR 2. I'd love a new Star Wars. Could you imagine a new Star Wars MMO that looks as good as like the, some of the recent Star Wars games? What was that one with Cal Lightsaber? What's his name? Jedi Fallen Order. Imagine a new Star Wars MMO that looked as good as Jedi Fallen Order. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> We'll see. Who knows? Probably not going to happen. Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis is getting its first major update this week. Sandstorm Requiem launches on December 15th and includes a brand new zone, this desert region that will be made up of sand dunes, rocky terrain, and canyons. In that new playable area will be a host of uh, new enemy types, the Fortos Launcher, Fortos Laser, Lazentos, and Medius. What is up with the names of things in this game. The update also includes a raise to the level cap and a brand new skill for every class in the game. Three additional elemental techniques are being added. World trials, which are these large scale interruptive events. And there's a brand new title system with a handful of other additions. Uh, this seems to be a much needed update for new Genesis. It's so weird because I had a fun time in the game's beta. Although I felt like from the beta that the game might be lacking content. Well, when it officially launched, everyone pretty much agreed. There just like wasn't enough to do. And it's such a shame because because the game's open world aspect and its movement system and the combat just it all was really fluid and felt really good there just wasn't a lot of game there which is just such a, a major shame this update does seem to be a step in the right direction although i'm curious if it will be enough to get people uh, coming back to the game my guess is it'll probably take a few more updates before most people consider revisiting it the next story i'm pretty pumped on we got a, a brand new gameplay trailer for v rising released this week it just looks so darn good they show a bunch of open world action there are two players taking on various groups of npcs and the combat looks really solid like just like battle right i mean it does look nearly identical but i don't say that disparagingly because i've really loved playing battle right and battle right royale beyond the opening scenes of pve combat we do get a brief look at some resource gathering as they hit these rocks before this massive rock creature emerges from the ground and interrupts them then we also got a look at some open world pvp the pair come across a group of other players who are in the middle of harvesting they get the jump on them exchange a few blows and come out victorious um, and then the trailer wraps up with a few brief clips of our vampire player dodging the sunlight in daytime before arriving at his castle game just looks great dude i don't know what else to say i mean so i've really enjoyed stunlock's prior games both the arena combat battle right and then the battle royale spinoff they did battle right royale i know that there are some concerns over how the company handled both of those games uh, from what i understand it basically boils down to them abandoning them a little too quickly and also over monetizing them in spite of that as like a non-hardcore player of both of them i just remember having a really good time when i played those games so hopefully their post-launch management of v rising is a little bit better than it was with battle right because yeah this game looks really cool looks like it could be a lot of fun in my last video i did a fairly in-depth look at all of the big pc gaming news that came out of the game awards i don't want to just rehash that entire video here but in case you missed it here's a quick recap of some of the things that i like the most so we got a bunch of new game re reveals that i'm interested in first there was nightingale the shared open world survival crafting game set in what they call a gas lamp victorian fantasy world players basically go through these portals into these very biomes filled with different types of creatures and then they do the survival crafting thing harvest gathering making tools and weapons constructing bases and then also fending off all sorts of different types of enemies i love the enemy design in this game too it looks really really good there was also arc raiders a cooperative free-to-play third-person shooter where we play as a squad of raiders tasked with fending off invading interstellar robots uh, the visuals in this one just blow me away i think this the trailer the gameplay trailer they released looks absolutely amazing I hope the gameplay holds up and the uh, systems within the game hold up. But man, this thing is uh, uh, quite a stunner visually. Uh, Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. Cannot believe it. But yes, we're getting a sequel to Space Marine. So it's a brand new third person action game that will continue the story of Captain Titus. Uh, lastly, the, the other big new announcement I, I liked was Rumbleverse. This is a free to play 30, 40 person melee brawler royale. It's basically like a fighting game slash wrestling slash battle royale hybrid. And I think this looks pretty pretty slick as well. It's cool to see. I like battle royales and I like these spin-offs of that formula rather than the standard first or third person shooter. And then the other major thing that I really was interested in was the uh, release date announcement of Lost Dark. It's going to be coming out on February 11th, 2022. Now that is just a brief glimpse of the event. 
this I would add like 30 minutes to this video if I covered everything. In fact, that's basically what my last video is. So if you want a more detailed look at all of the big PC gaming news from the Game Awards, go check out my top 10 most exciting PC, whatever you can see. It's, it's, it's the last video on my channel, so just go click on that. <laughs> all right, we got some brand new game reveals outside of the Game Awards. The first one is called Undecember. What a name. This is an upcoming top-down hack and slash action RPG. They say the game's primary focus is combat. That sounds like pretty much any other ARPG, but also offers a, a lot of freedom to select various combat styles through this classless progression. So players can freely swap gear and skills to fit different play styles, focusing either on strength, dexterity, or intelligence. You can mix and match this as you please. As examples, they said you could cast magic with a sword or summon minions with a bow. Basically, you'll just have a lot of freedom to mix and match abilities and play styles uh, and then the main content of the game will include a main campaign that is separated by acts like a lot of a lot of other hack and slash arpgs end game will consist of pve in the form of chaos dungeons and boss raids and then there's also this free-for-all mode pvp available undecember will be coming quarter one 2022 undecember Okay, uh, next title is King of the Dwarves. They call this an underground city builder where you will mine and build a, in a vast procedurally generated 3D world, gather resources, research technology, train warriors and engineers, forge weapons, fight monsters, and manage hundreds of units. Ultimate goal is to become the King of the Dwarves. No release window for this one. On Steam, it just says when they find the right mountain. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other brand new game reveal that just came out was Stargate Timekeepers. This is a real-time tactics game where you lead a team of specialists through a story-driven campaign set in the SG-1 universe, sneak your characters behind enemy lines, use unique skills, and craft the perfect plan to unravel a time loop mystery. It looks like this one is slated for some time in 2022. And I want to just touch on a few brand new playable bits of content and games available pretty much right now. I cannot believe it, but the first one is a new expansion for Kingdoms of Amalur. Yes, the same Kingdoms of Amalur that was released in 2012. Well, kind of. This is a crazy story, but the super simple recap is that the original game released nearly 10 years ago. Then the studio making it for a whole lot of insane reasons was shut down. The rights to the game were then transferred to the state of Rhode Island. So they heavily invested in the studio. And then when the studio went under, Rhode Island claimed everything. <laughs> Then after they sat on the game for a few years, because Rhode Island's not the best game developer, uh, it got the IP got sold off to THQ Nordic, who in 2020 put out a remastered version of the game called Kingdom, Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning, and now they just released a brand new expansion. So it's called Fate Sworn. It adds a new storyline, a new environment, various new quest and missions, new chaos realm dungeons, a new gameplay mechanic, new weapons and armor, new enemies, and much, much more. The fact that a game that originally released in 2012 is getting a new expansion nearly 10 years later is just crazy to me. But even more so, this kind of gives me hope that THQ Nordic is interested in doing more with the Kingdoms of Amalur IP. I don't think they're gonna continue the work of the in-development MMO that the prior studio was working on that was based in this world. That would be nice, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Even just a sequel to Kingdoms of Amalur I think would be really, really cool. I liked the game a lot. I thought it was a bit underrated and could have been bigger than it was ultimately, but yeah, crazy. New expansion for that game, wow, huh? And then there's the brand new release of the title called The Gunk. This is a 3D exploration adventure game from the creators of Ste the SteamWorld series. In The Gunk, you play as Ronnie, part of this duo of space haulers who come across an untouched planet brimming with life, but covered in gunk. You'll have to use your trusty power glove and to go around cleaning up the corruption and uncovering the secrets. Kind of reminds me a lot of uh, Bridge of Spirits, which came out not too long ago. You gotta just clear the corruption. Looks kind of cool. looks like a cool adventure game. And briefly, two more things. Uh, Bungie is celebrating its 30th anniversary, so they're holding a big event in Destiny 2 in honor of that. And then there was a new update for Fallout 76 called Night of the Moth. Got a bunch of new missions and Mothman-related stuff. And that pretty much does it for this week's PC Gaming News. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Um, let me know what you think, too. This week, I kind of tried to structure it into, like, stories and then... Um, new and new reveals and then playable. I did those three cat. I mean, you guys just watched it. So you saw, what do you think about? I'm thinking about doing more category stuff for the, maybe, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy guys. I'll see you next time.